section nine of journal of the rev francis asbury volume one this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by kathleen journal of the rev francis asbury volume one section nine lord's day october three every day i have endeavored to use what little strength i had for god and this day i felt something better in my body and quite serene in my mind rode to bush and preached to many people with considerable power but had a violent fever at night which held me nine hours it is my desire to be resigned to the will of god in all things sent brother w in my place to supply the appointments wednesday six my disorder returned and my body was in great pain for many hours felt some patience but not enough oh that this affliction may answer the intended end my will is quite resigned to the will of god so that i cannot ask ease in pain but desire to be truly thankful and leave the disposal of all things entirely with him it is undoubtedly a gracious providence that my lot should be cast in the family of j d during my indisposition to travel i shall never forget the kindness or discharge the obligations i am under to mrs sarah dalham who watched and waited upon me day and night god grant that the same measure which she had meted to me may return upon herself and her children on thursday and friday my mind was kept in peace though i could do very little but read the language of my heart is lord thy will be done my disorder has increased and for several days my indisposition has been so great that i kept no journal my friends wept around and expected my dissolution was near but the lord thought on both them and me to raise me up from the borders of death oh that my few remaining days may be spent to his glory that every valuable end may be answered by my future life wednesday twenty seven mr d was so kind as to conduct me in a carriage to my friend barnett preston's at deer creek on friday i found myself much better and my soul was kept in peace and purity may the lord ever keep me near to himself november four our quarterly meeting came on and i attended the private business though in much weakness of body some of my brethren did not altogether please me my hand appears still to be against every man mr rankin conducted the meeting at the close of the whole i discovered the affectionate attachment which subsisted between many of my dear friends and me it cut me to the heart when we came to part from each other they wept and i wept especially brother l and his wife may the gracious lord remember them in mercy and love november six was able to sit up and write to my dear friend mr s y it is but little i can do but thanks be to god for any help heard brother w preach and thought it my duty to blame him for speaking against the knowledge of salvation was better on thursday but threw myself into a violent fever by my own imprudence tuesday nine my disorder seems to be going off though i mend but slowly on wednesday i went to mr d s in a carriage and met with mr r who preached there the next day mr r set off for philadelphia and left me still poorly saturday thirteen though i have not preached for a month yet i ventured to attend the funeral of j gallon a presbyterian but a man who had borne a christian character as they could get no preacher of their own profession they made application to me many people attended on this solemn occasion and it was a very moving time monday fifteen found myself much better in health and concluded to set off on my master's business as soon as i should be properly equipped on thursday my heart was fixed trusting in the lord and as my body was gathering strength i set out on monday for baltimore and on friday reached william lynch's who entertained me with the greatest kindness 
here i had the pleasure of seeing our new church begun on back river neck the next day he conducted me in his carriage to the point where i was enabled to preach with some power then returned to the neck and met with mr j he heard the word of god with great freedom of mind and i believe his false peace was broken my spirit was greatly refreshed by meeting brother y at baltimore on monday and the next day i was much assisted in preaching to a large number of people in town both rich and poor may the lord arise and show himself gracious to these people through abundant grace i feel nothing contrary to the purest intention nor the least desire for anything but god bless the lord o oh my soul thursday twenty five had occasion to go to annapolis and found some desire to preach there but perceiving the spirit and practice of the people i declined it a tavern keeper offered me the use of his house for preaching but he was a deist and i did not feel free to open my mouth in his house after my return to baltimore mr j the person mentioned a few days ago came and invited me to his house the next morning at breakfast he showed much freedom in conversation and there was great appearance of a change monday twenty nine have been able to officiate at the town and point every day and the congregations rather increase lord make me humble and more abundantly useful and give me the hearts of the people that i may conduct them to thee i feel great hopes that the god of mercy will interpose and do these dear people good this day we agreed with mr l to undertake the brickwork of our new building at the point at night i was seized with a violent fever and as many of my friends thought it improper for me to go immediately into the circuit i concluded to abide for a season in town many are under some awakenings here and they are very kind and affectionate to me my heart is with the lord he is my all in all wednesday december one preached at nathan Herrig's and william lynch's at the latter place many more people attended than we could expect considering the conduct of abraham rowling who in his preaching had behaved more like a madman than anything else rode the next day to richard owings where a few attended the word who understood the things of god my soul is in peace but i wish to bear all things with perfect patience and feel less affected by all that men may say of me and every act of disagreeable conduct towards me saturday four i returned to baltimore and the house of mr william moore was crowded with people who attended to hear the word footnote he became a methodist and afterward fell away End of footnote. and the next day i felt great satisfaction in preaching to a large number of people at the point most of them have good attention but some were unruly tuesday seven yesterday i was very ill all the day with a fever but feel something better to-day god is the portion of my soul he favors me with sweet peace and sanctifies all my afflictions lord evermore keep me and conduct me in safety to thy blessed presence above i had a fever and kept my bed on wednesday and should have thought the day had been lost had it not been a season for the exercise of my patience preached on friday with some satisfaction though in great weakness of body having been very ill in the preceding night on saturday my mind was serene though i greatly long to have a deeper sense of god continually resting on my heart my soul pants earnestly for closer communion with the lord and to die to be crucified to every other object lord's day twelve while preaching at the point there was great solemnity very visible in the congregation the power of god was eminently present and one person fell under it such members of people attended to hear the word to-day in town that we knew not how to accommodate them and there appeared to be more seriousness than usual among them tuesday fourteen we had a comfortable time at william lynch's the next day mr chase a church minister was present at preaching we had some conversation afterward in which we did not disagree but poor man one more ignorant of the deep things of god i have scarcely met with of his cloth he knew brother k and appearing to be angry with him 
he abused him for preaching in the church though very unwell i rode twenty miles on thursday to preach at william worthington's where a few of them felt the power of god mr w and his wife in particular were tenderly affected saturday eighteen though in a high fever i rode twenty miles through the rain to baltimore but the lord preserved me and i was able to preach to a small company at night being unwell on the lord's day i did not attempt to preach till night but then the people were serious and the power of god was present monday twenty mrs hulling introduced me to the family of mrs rogers where they treated me with great kindness and care oh that plenty may not hurt nor ease destroy me lord help me in all things to desire nothing but thee thursday twenty three r o informed me that the work of god was gaining ground in frederick county i preached at john dearer's in the old town and had a wild staring congregation on friday the lord graciously blessed me with sweet peace and much love my heart is greatly affected at times for the town of baltimore and i am almost ready to doubt whether it is my duty to tarry here yet the seriousness of the people appears to increase and a few are concerned for their salvation monday twenty seven my soul was happy in god brother w brought good accounts from the country where the congregation are large and some coming to the lord i have great hopes that my acquaintance with the family of mrs rogers will be rendered a blessing to them and i expect to see the mother and son bow to the cross of christ tuesday twenty eight guise paraphrase has lately afforded me great delight it is a pity that such a man ever imbibed the calvinistic principles my soul was kept in peaceful composure to-day and at night i made a religious visit which i hope will not be labor lost on my return home i had great hope that philip rogers will yet become a disciple of jesus christ i still pray and long and wait for an outpouring of the blessed spirit on this town oh that the time were come lord hasten it for thy mercy's sake tuesday january fourth seventeen seventy four my body has been indisposed for some days past but the grace of god has rested on my soul and i have been enabled to preach several times with freedom power and great boldness the lord being my helper feeling rather better to-day i ventured to ride in a chaise ten miles to mr l where we had some agreeable christian conversation returned the next day and continued on well sometimes being confined to my bed for a day together yet i preached at other times to large congregations it frequently appears as if almost the whole town would come together to hear the word of the lord surely it will not be altogether in vain the lord giveth me great patience and all things richly to enjoy with many very kind friends who pay great attention to me in my affliction amongst others mr swoop a preacher in high dutch came to see me he appeared to be a good man and i opened to him the plan of methodism friday fourteen though this was the day for the return of my disorder yet i felt much better a blister under my ear has removed the pain in my head a great sense of god rested on my heart while meeting the class to-day there is an apparent alteration in this family and i must conclude the lord directed my steps among them saturday fifteen my body is still weak though on the recovery lord if thou shouldst be pleased to raise me up let it be to do more good i desire to live only for this lord i am thine to serve thee for ever with soul and body time and talents o oh my god now all i am and have is devoted to thee mercifully assist me by thy grace to persevere in all well-doing amen lord's day sixteen while preaching in town this evening two young men in the midst of the sermon came in and broke the order of the meeting on monday my heart felt an uncommon burden on account of the inhabitants of this place and sometimes i despair of ever doing them much good but a constant sense of god resteth on my own soul wednesday nineteen my mind is kept in peace though my body is weak 
so that i have not strength sufficient for travelling nevertheless i can read and think oh that it may be to the glory of him who in his great wisdom thinks proper to confine me lord ever draw my heart after thee may i see no beauty in any other object nor desire anything but thee my heart longs to be more extensively useful but is at the same time filled with perfect resignation to god in all my affliction therefore i cannot choose for myself but leave all to him a young man who disturbed the congregation on the evening of the last lord's day has seen it expedient to excuse his conduct as almost the whole town thought him culpable thus doth god bring good out of evil and make the fierceness of man turn to his praise lord's day twenty three great numbers of people attended while i preached on the parable of the prodigal son tuesday twenty five this was a day of sweet peace i held a private conference with william moore and captain stone who both appeared to be convinced of sin thursday twenty seven many people attended this evening to hear an account of the rise discipline and practice of the methodists on which subject i enlarged with a warm exhortation and had great liberty and satisfaction if my labors should be in vain for the people the lord gives me a gracious reward in my own soul friday twenty eight my heart was fixed on god and a great part of my time spent in reading i also met a class and received seven probationers into the society may the lord give them grace to stand lord's day thirty it appears that the people have a great desire to know the truth for though it rained and froze as it fell yet a great many attended to hear it was a very solemn time at night while i discoursed on the awful day of judgment samuel owings is tenderly affected for the salvation of his soul and william moore and philip rogers seem to be in earnest about this important matter glory to god for these things set out on monday for our quarterly meeting and met the preachers at brother owings they all appeared to have their hearts fixed on promoting the work of god for the ensuing quarter and we consulted together with great freedom and love on the first day i inquired into the moral character of the local preachers appointed them their work and gave them written licenses to officiate the preachers who spoke at this meeting manifested great earnestness and zeal for the salvation of souls and many of the people were much affected all was harmony and love for the next quarter we had our stations as follows p ebird e drumgool and richard owings in frederick circuit brother yerbury and brother rawlings in kent circuit henry waters and brother w in baltimore circuit and myself in baltimore town we appointed our next quarterly meeting to be held in baltimore on the first of may next much fatigued in my feeble frame by various exercises i returned to town and visited mrs moore who was afflicted in body and distressed in mind thursday february three last night while we were all below stairs my bed took fire by some unknown means though it stood three yards from the fireplace we happily came up in due time and finding the room full of smoke we discovered the fire and extinguished it surely there was a kind providence in this this day i wrote a letter to mr o a german minister relative to his settling in baltimore town though the weather was very disagreeable yet many attended at night to hear the word god is still my chief object and my desire is to glorify and serve him on saturday mr s came to consult me in respect to mr o's coming to this town we agreed to promote his settling here and laid a plan nearly similar to ours to wit that gifted persons amongst them who may at any time be moved by the holy ghost to speak for god should be encouraged and if the synod would not agree they were still to persevere in this line of duty lord's day six we had a moving time at the point and after dining with mr swoop the german minister 
many people attended at mrs Tribalit's to hear me preach but a company of men who would wish to support the character of gentlemen came drunk and attempted an interruption however philip rogers once their intimate associate in sin had courage enough to defend the cause of god nevertheless i thought it expedient to dismiss the congregation and know not how this will end but this i know satan and his emissaries are greatly displeased monday seven according to appointment i went to elk ridge and was kindly received by mr i worthington i spent part of three days laboring for the salvation of souls in this place there are many wealthy and wicked people destitute of all true religion numbers attended to hear the word and some were affected lord let it not be as the seed sown by the wayside return to baltimore on wednesday and the next day i advised the widow t to seek redress of a magistrate for the late riot made in her house but they advised her to put up with it for this time as mr m offered the use of his house i met the people there on friday night and found the disturbance had not diminished the congregation but increased it thus satan prepares a weapon to wound his own cause after reading to the congregation part of the plain account of the people called methodists i told them we were a united body and as such would defend our own cause that i had qualified myself according to the act of toleration and had a legal right to preach the gospel friday eleven endeavored to raise something by subscription towards building a methodist church but as the whole lieth on my shoulders i find the burden rather too heavy however god is my support and my heart is with him tuesday fifteen a lively sense of god rested on my soul while preaching to a number of attentive people collected at w l s and in meeting the class at night i found the members steady wednesday sixteen returning to the point i received a melancholy account of a poor abandoned wretch who staggered into a brothel at night and was found dead the next morning he was found at the door of mr l and there were reasons to suspect he was murdered thus we see the vengeance of god frequently overtakes impenitent sinners even in this life how awful the thought that a soul in such a condition should be unexpectedly hurried to the judgment seat of a righteous god let every poor drunkard take the warning lest the next time he brutifies his immortal spirit by depriving it of the proper use of its rational powers it should be suddenly driven out of the reach of divine mercy on my return to town at night w m gave me a pleasing account of the unspeakable peace with which god had blessed him but let him that most assuredly standeth take heed lest he fall the next evening i finished reading the plain account of the people called methodists and then exhorted the congregation with much warmth of heart friday eighteen while preaching at the house of mr moore his father and mother were moved by the word of god but after lying down at night to rest my heart was oppressed with inexpressible feelings for the inhabitants of baltimore i am pressed under them as a cart full of sheaves and would rather be employed in the most servile offices than preach to them if it were not from a sense of duty to god and a desire to be instrumental in saving their souls if honor and worldly gain were held out as motives to this painful work they would to me appear lighter than vanity but lord thou knowest my motives and my ends o oh, prosper thou the work of my heart and my hands End of section 9